So let us look at how we are going to use these value functions right in order to solve a macro audition process right. So if you recall right a value function or a value of a state right value function solve the state value function is the expected long term return or uh, the return starting from that state right and it depends on the agent's policy. So we already have said that so it is going to depend on the policy of the agent and it is going to depend on the state from which you start and this is the expected value of the return and the return can be uh, uh, return uh, I mean expanded in this form right. So this is where we left off in the last lecture. So let us look at something called the notion of the Bellman equation okay we are going to look at something called the notion of the Bellman equation. So how we are going to do this is the following. Let us take the value, like let us take uh, the expression for gt, right. So, what is the expression for gt? It is rt plus 1, right, plus gamma rt plus 2 plus gamma squared rt plus 3 plus dot dot dot, okay. So, that is basically what the, uh, 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 the, the expression for the return is, right. All of you remember that. Now I am going to do something simple. I am going to write the return as R t plus 1 plus gamma times R t plus 2 plus gamma R t plus 3 plus dot dot dot. Okay. So what does this mean? I have just taken the gamma out, right? I am not done anything fancy. But look at this expression, right? So what does it? Let us just, just take a step back and see how the return expression came to be right. How did the return expression come? So we started with some state right st then we do action a t right then we go to st plus 1 then get r t plus 1 then take a t plus 1 go to s t plus 2 r t plus 2 blah, 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 okay. that is what happens right. So now how did I count the return at time t? So the return at time t okay, is just the summation of all the rewards that I am I am getting from t onwards, right? The summation of all the rewards that I am getting from time t onwards, and that would mean that it's r t plus one plus r t plus two or gamma times r t plus two and so on and so forth, right? Now suppose I want you to write down the return at time t plus 1 right. Suppose I want you to write down the return starting from time t plus 1 then what you do is you start from this time step right you start from this reward you start from rt plus 2 right. So you start from rt plus 2 then you do gamma times rt plus 3 plus gamma squared rt plus 4 and so on and so forth right. So, so this t basically this this t plus 1 or t plus 2 or whatever it is it is the time I start plus 1 right. So the return from time t will start summing up from r t plus 1 right the return at time t plus 1 will start summing up from r t plus 2 okay. So that is basically what we are seeing here. So this is the summation here. So this summation the second summation that you are looking at here is essentially g t plus 1. So this is r t plus 1 plus gamma times g t plus 1 g t is equal to r t plus 1 plus gamma times g t plus 1 okay. So that is essentially what we have done here right. So we have taken the the, well, the, the value function for v pi and we have written it in terms of r t plus 1 plus gamma times g t plus 1 right. Of course, the, the fact that we start at st equal to s is always there, right? We are not changing that, right? So that is basically what it is. Now, I can go a step further, right? I can start, you know, rolling this out, right? So what do, what do I mean by rolling it out? So I have this expectation that says e pi, right? What does this expectation e pi mean? So we looked at it in the last class, right? Or the last lecture. So what does this expectation over e pi mean? So I am starting from some state, right? So this is st. It's fixed to be small s, right? St is fixed to be small s. There's no question about it. Then I take an action, right? So this at 
is going to be sampled from pi of s correct then what is going to happen this is going to go to the next state right which is s t plus 1 and I am going to get a reward r t plus 1 along the way right and how am I going to get this s t plus 1 and r t plus 1. So, s t plus 1 and r t plus 1 are sample from the probability distribution that we had of s comma a t. One of the things to notice is that the state s is fixed right, but what is the action I am using here depends on what action I sampled here right. So, for every action I sample here there will be a different transition probability that I have to use. So, for every action I sample here, right, for every action I sample here, there will be different pro transition probability I will be using. So, you remember our grid world, right. So, you had this, right. So, if I am st in some state, yes, and I try to go up, right, then I will be sampling from the states that are to the up of the, uh, to, uh, to one, one, one level above the current position. So, if I am going to try to go down, I will be sampling from states somewhere below the current position depending on what kind of noise model I have right. So, let us say let us let us take a simple example right. So, this is the grid world right? and then for every action right suppose I, I let us say I start from here right and then I try to go north right start from here and I try to go north right I try to go up right. Then I land here let us say I land here with some probability say 0 0.8 right. I land here with some probability 0 0.1, I land here with a probability 0 0.1. Right? You see where I am going with this right. So, if I have a state, if you have a state and I take an action. So, the intended location of the action I will go to with probability 0 0.8 right. On either side of the intended location I will go to with probability 0 0.1 right. So, likewise let us let us uh, let us take another action right. Let us say I try to go right that means then I will go here with probability 0 0.8, I will go here with probability 0 0.1 or here with probability 0 0.1. So, let us say that that is the MDP that we have right. You have 4 states I am sorry you have uh, you have the states here and you have 4 actions and each action has some probability of getting here right. So, what is going to happen is that let us say I have my policy pi right. So, pi up given any state is 0 0.5 and pi right given any state is 0 0.5. So, what does this mean? At any given state I toss a coin if it comes heads I go up, if it comes tails I go right ok that is basically the policy. These are all simple examples that I am creating for you to look at now right. Now, at this state yes okay, and we need to specify what the reward is right. Let us say the reward is uniformly minus 1 right if I uh, uh, if I move right the reward is minus 1 and all 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 all, all uh, for all actions right for all states all action combination the reward is minus 1 right. Let us say that I am in this state right and I want to compute what is my what is my uh, return right. So, how this whole process is going to go right I want to look at what is my expected value of the return right that is what I am computing namely this this particular expression. Right. So, I start at state s, then I first sample an action a t. So, the action could be because of the way my policy is defined right, because my policy says half probability half I will go up, probability half I will go right. So, I do not, I will never get to go down or I will never get to go left ok. So, that is that those are those two actions are kind of excluded here. So, whenever I say I am going to sample now an action from this policy pi, because my pi has only two possible actions which have a pro non zero probability. So, I will either get up or I will get right ok. Now, if I get up right suppose my action was up then I will be sampling from the probability distribution corresponding to s comma up ok. I will be sampling uh, from the probability distribution corresponding to s comma up right. So, let us say this is this are states 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So, this is 16, this is 1 and it goes as you would expect it to right. right. 
So now my current state I have is seven, right? So my my s is equal to seven, right? And if my action is to go up, right? Then only the states corresponding to these three squares, right? So that is ten, eleven, and twelve will appear in my uh, distribution, right? So this will be either uh, I'll have to look at what is the probability of ten or eleven or twelve, and based on that I'll have to figure out. Uh, where I am going to land up it, right? So this is basically the probability distribution. So my st plus one can only be ten, eleven, or twelve because for all other states the uh, value is zero. So I'll sample one of these states, ten, eleven, or twelve, and my reward will always be minus one. We just said that, right? So the reward will always be minus one, and that is how my sampling would work. Right? You get that? So I look at where I am, right? I have fixed it, right? My I have fixed my uh, starting state in this particular example. We fixed the starting state to be seven, right? I fixed it at seven. And then I took an action according to my policy pi, right? So the policy pi says you can either go up or right. So I'll sample an action according to pi. In this case, let us say I sample going up. Then I'll have to sample a next state according to where I end up in. So it could be one of these three states, right? We have, right? So what are these three states? Ten, eleven, or twelve, right? So it's one of those three states that uh, is where you could land up. And then you sample one of those states, right? And then you come back, right? And you use this to compute that, right? So basically, what you would do is, okay, this is R T plus one, which will be minus one, gamma time G T plus one. Let's say my the state I end up is in eleven, so it will be the return that I will get starting from state eleven, right? And going forward using policy pi, right? So now my G T plus one, I'll have to sample from my state eleven here, and then I'll have to see what happens according to my policy pi and where I will end up. In. Okay, so that's basically the Uh, the process by which you are generating this uh, 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 expectation, right? This is the process by which you have to compute this expectation. So first, you sample from action pi, then you get a next action, right? and then once you get the next action, you plug that in, and then you sample from the transition probability and reward, right? The joint distribution that we spoke about some time back. So you sample from that joint distribution. That is going to give you the next state and the next reward. and then you go, is again start the same process from the next state onwards right so that's basically what we have to do right so now we have to look at these distributions that we have talked about right and then somehow you know plug them in into computing the value function right so i'm writing out this expectation here so this is something that you have to pay close attention to and and make sure that you understand this thoroughly right how many ever times you have to look at this Make sure you understand this part thoroughly. I'll, I'll actually complicate it a little bit later. Right? So the first thing you have to look at is uh, how am I going to sample an action, right? So the whole expectation: I first sample an action, then I sample the next state and reward, and then I keep going from the next state onwards. Right? So that's basically my uh, um, uh, the way I compute the expectation, right? So let's let's look at that and how I'm going to do this is by writing out each one of the sampling process along the way. Right, the first thing I do is I have to sample the action. How do I sample the action? I sample it from pi, right? So that's what we have written. Now, if I am going to take an expect, so let's let's uh, just so that people understand what I am talking about here. Let's give a simpler example. Suppose I have some probability distribution, right? So I say I have some f of x, right? That's a distribution, and I want to compute uh, so uh, compute the expectation, right? So what will I do? I'll first uh, 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 compute f of x. According to some, uh, 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 right? So I'll first uh, compute f of x one, right? Then I'll compute f of x two, then I'll compute f of x three, and all that. And then what will I do? Then I'll take what is the probability of x one, right, into f of x one plus probability of x two into f of x two plus probability of x three into f of x three, right? So this is how I compute the expectation. Right? This is equal to the expected value of f of x. Right? So uh, assuming x can take only three values, x one, x two, x three. So this is how I compute expect value of f of x. Right? So now I'm going to do the same thing, literally. So this expression right, is my f of x. Right? Now I have to find out what is the probability of getting that x. Right? So that is what I'm trying to work out here. So the probability of getting that x. So, so that I can write this f of x in here is the following, right? So, first I have to select an action, 
right and then having selected the action i have to select the next state and reward so next state and rewards are what what is needed here so i have to select the action and then select the next state and reward so first i select the action by pi a of s and i have to now take the summation for all possible values that a can take right just like we took the summation for all possible values x can take i have to take the summation for all possible values that a can take so that summed over a pi of a given s which is the probability now i get to the next point where i have to pick s and r right so how am i picking s and r i'm sampling from this probability distribution so i have probability distribution of s and r and for all possible values of right st plus 1 which is to say s prime right so for all possible values that st plus 1 can take so i say summation over s prime and summation over r right sometimes this can also be an integral over r depending on uh, uh, if r is continuous or not let's say r can take values only 0 or 1 or minus 1 or plus 1 then i can actually write summation over r right otherwise i'll have to think of this as a integration that's let's not worry about that for the time being right so now i have this a uh, 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 probability distribution and then i have to write my f of x right so now the the p has come out right the the probability the p of x1 the p of x2 p of x3 that part has been written out now so i have pi and then i have p which is the probability of the next state and reward right then the sample that i get which is the small r is the actual reward i get at time t plus 1 right r t plus 1 is is some some value small r and that's why i'm summing over all possible values that r t plus 1 can take so for some uh, particular outcome r t plus 1 is going to be small r and then for that particular outcome i'm also going to land up in some state st plus 1 which is equal to s prime right so that is like saying okay this is what i am doing here right and my small r is equal to minus 1 and my st plus 1 equal to 11 right so i started from s or st equal to 7 right then my st plus 1 is now 11 and r is minus 1 this is one particular outcome like that i have to look at all possible outcomes that's why i'm summing over s prime and r so that's basically what it is now given that i'm starting from s prime i have to look at what gt plus 1 would be okay but remember that this gt plus 1 depends on what i do in the future in terms of my policy pi and what are the transitions i'm going to get in the future and so on and so forth i can't just write it as gt plus 1 i still have to write the expected value here so why does this expected value doesn't go away because i have already expanded here right i have expanded uh, the the uh, the, uh, the action probabilities i have ex expanded the next state probabilities i have expanded the reward probabilities all the probabilities i have accounted for but this expectation still doesn't go away why is that so all the probabilities that i have accounted for so far are for the first step of the selection right so I, we are counted for only the first step of the transition process so remember that we have this dot 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 going forward right so that dot 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 part we haven't yet accounted right and how we kind of account for that dot 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 part is to say that hey look i have done the the probability for the first step from the second step onwards which is the return gt plus 1 you still have to do the expectation part right you still have to roll out the probability so i have done the rolling out of the probability for the rolling out has been done for one step of the trajectory generation from the second step onwards i still have to compute the expectation right and therefore we keep the expectation here but fortunately for us we don't have to explicitly compute the expectation right so what is so e pi of gt is given that you are starting in state small s is v pi of s correct that's how we define it now e pi of gt plus 1 given that st plus 1 is s prime so what does this mean this is actually equal to e pi of gt given st equal to s prime why is that the case because it's markov is that it and we are assuming that our mdp is stationary right because of that we can say whether you compute the reward from time when s s happens at time t or when s happens at time t plus 1 it doesn't matter the return is going to be the same because we are assuming things are markov 
and also the things are stationary right does not change with time the dynamics does not change therefore, I can write this instead of saying that uh, e pi g t plus 1 given s t plus 1 equal s prime it is the same as saying e pi uh, uh, expected value of g t given s t equal to s prime. Now, what is this guy equal to? So, we know that from our definition. So, this is equal to v pi of s prime okay that is equal to v pi of s prime. So, putting all of this together I can write my v pi of s equal to summation over a pi of a given s summation over s prime and r p of s prime comma r given s comma a times so this is where my f of x comes in right the times r plus gamma times this expression goes away so we have v pi of s prime okay you see that so i have written v pi of s now in terms of v pi of s right so so, this s prime can be anything right remember this s prime could also be s yes. it could very well be that I am here and I try to move up I cannot right. So, I will just stay here right. So, my s prime is also the same 13. So, if I am in state 13 and I try to move up I will stay in say state 13 right. So, my s prime is also 13 so that is fine that is fine okay. So, my v pi of s is given by this expression. So, where on the right hand side also we have e pi and on the left hand side also we have e pi and then we can solve this right. So, notice that this is actually a system of linear equations right it is all linear right. So, there is nothing non-linear here I am not taking the product of two v pi's right so, nothing non-linear and the unknowns are the v pi's right. So, I have let us say I have uh, you know uh, say number of states is equal to say capital N then I have n variables right. So, v pi of s 1, v pi of s 2 all the way till v pi of s n right. I have n variables that are unknown and how many equations I will have? I have n equations one for each variable right one for each variable appearing on the on the left hand side right. So, we have n such equations and we have n unknowns. So, it is a linear system of equations right n equations with n unknowns and it turns out because of the way we define the value function right this system of equations actually have a unique solution. So, I am not getting into the uh, uh, proof of that, but uh, it is uh, fairly uh, uh, straightforward I mean there are we, we, we will link to other videos where we show the proofs, but it is not quite needed for the, uh, the main lecture. So, the way we have defined the return right it turns out that the unique solution exists right. So, what you have now is you have taken this problem of computing the expected value of the long term return right the full return right up going up to whatever God knows up to infinity right. So, we were actually thinking about how do you sum up till infinity right. So, that part now we have taken care of by saying that hey no no it is not really going up to infinity right. You can just basically you know use this uh, realization right we use this intuition that g t can be written in terms of g t plus 1 right and then taking the expected value of g t plus 1 is essentially using v pi of s prime right. So, this is a very neat idea right. So, instead of looking at the return going off into infinity I am kind of using this, uh, uh, this, this kind of a recursive notion right like an iterative way of defining what the return should be right. Instead of summing up all the way into infinity I am basically saying that hey no no look you take the one step and then use the return again because it is going off till infinity anyway right I can use the return to write the original summation right. So, that is a very very cool idea right this is this is this is an amazing stuff this is what makes reinforcement learning really work right the fact that you can actually do this computation in a tractable manner. Uh, because even though you have a summation going off into infinity you can do this kind of a iterative uh, or recursive definition of what the return should be right and use that to set up a linear system of equations in n variables which you know all of you know how to solve right you have many many techniques for solving these linear system of equations in n variables and it turns out conveniently in this particular instance right uh, not, not quite conveniently it is the way we defined it there is a unique solution for this right. All of this was actually originally uh, uh, I will erase it so that you can see his face right. This kind of intuition uh, uh, there are multiple people who came up with this recursive way of writing this 
right? Uh, but uh, one of the most popular uh, uh, versions of this is due to uh, uh, Richard P. Bellman, right? So that is Bellman. So, so, so in the RL community, we typically end up calling this the Bellman equations. So other communities have different names for it. Some people call it the Poisson equation. And some people call it different names. Uh, but uh, we will be calling these as a Bellman equation for a fixed policy pi, right? So that's basically uh, what we have written out here. Let's look at another example. So we already looked at a simple example with the grid world. Let's look at another example and see how the value functions are going to look like, right? So here is a grid world again. So this is a five by five grid world. So there are twenty-five states in which the agent can be, and the agent has four actions it can take: north, south, east, west. And these actions are deterministic. So if I say go north, it'll always go north. Not like the one that we saw earlier, right? But this is always go north, it'll go north, right? And then uh, uh, if the, uh, if the action would take the agent off the grid. So what do I mean by that? If you are here and you try to go here, right? Nothing happens. You stay in the same location. But you get a reward of minus one. Okay, so you stay in the same location, but you get a reward of minus one, and any other move that you could make, you get a reward of zero, except in this particular two instances, right? Let's get this here straight. There are four actions, right? So north, south, east, west, right? There are four actions: north, south, east, west, and if you try to move out of the grid, then you get a reward of minus one. Otherwise, you get a reward of zero, except if you are in state A, right, or if you are in state B. Any action you take in state A or in state B, right, will give you a reward. Let's let's look at this. So you are in state B, okay. So uh, the probability of right uh, the next state being B prime and the reward being plus five, given your current state is B, and your action is anything, right? Your action could be north, south, east, or west, right? This is one, and the rest of the probabilities are zero. So what does this mean? So if I am in state B, right? If I am in state B and take any one of those four actions, I am going. To, if I am in state B and take any one of these four actions, north, south, east, west. I'm going to end up in state B prime, and I'll get a reward of plus five with probability one. That means it will surely happen. It's a deterministic outcome, right? And any other outcome doesn't have any any probability. That means it won't happen, right? So that basically means whenever you reach B, you take any action in B, right? You're going to get a plus five and end up in B prime. <coughs> Likewise for A, whenever you reach A, you take any action in A, right? You're going to get a reward of plus ten, but you'll end up in A prime. Right, so this is basically saying that probability of a prime given uh, and reward of plus ten, given you are in A and taking any action, right? So if you are in if, when you, whenever you reach A, then you get thrown back to A prime. Right? Whenever you reach B, you get thrown off to B prime, and then you can also get a reward. Otherwise, you get no reward. It's just a very simple example domain uh, that uh, we have cooked up just to show this uh, whole value function thing, right? Now, if I have Let's say an equiprobable random policy. So what does this mean? So pi of so north given any state, right, wherever you are, is equal to 0.25. Likewise, pi of you know east given any state is 0.25, and so on and so forth. Right. So for all these four actions, you have a probability of 0.25, whichever state you are in. So even if you are in this corner, there is a probability of 0.25. You will try to go north. Right, that's a probability of 0.25. You'll try to go west, right? So, so even though both of those will give you a minus one, it doesn't matter, right? So you'll you'll still try to do that. That's the way we have defined the policy. So this is called the equiprobable random policy, and we're also setting gamma equal to 0.9, right? So we need to have some gamma, otherwise, you know, because we don't have a minus one for every step, right? This will just could potentially just keep wandering around for a long time, as long as it keeps getting some positive reward occasionally, right? So that that. We don't want that to happen, right? We wanted to do something meaningful, so we set gamma equal to 0.9. Right? So now, if I say this, if this is the policy that I'm going to have, then I can compute the value function for all the states. Let's just pick one state and let's see how we would do that, right? And I'm going to assume that uh, I, I I know the values of uh, the neighboring states already, right? So let's look at how we do that. Let's take this state, right? So the value of this state is equal to what? From our equations that we have, right? So value of that state 
right is equal to looking at the probability so that's for each action so i'll have a so we'll call this state 1 right so v pi of 1 equal to first action probability is 0.25 remember they are all deterministic so because actions are deterministic this summation will become very simple i only have the summation over actions so 0.25 so which is let us say 0.25 is let's say going south going north let's go in this order north south east west let us say go north so going north gives you what a reward of 0 plus gamma times the reward what you get up there right so gamma times minus 1.0 that's what you have here right and likewise the next step will be 0.25 this is where going south right so if i'm trying to go south from here what will happen i'll get a negative reward i will get a minus 1 but i will stay where i am right so i will get a minus 1 that is fine and then plus gamma times what will i get well we don't want to use the minus 0.19 here because we are we are finding out v pi right so basically we'll write v pi of 1 right then plus we have another one which is west which also happens to be same thing Right. And finally, you have the last one, which is north, south, west, east. Right. So east, east is this guy. So what you will get? You get a reward of zero because all if you actually move, you get a reward of zero. And then 0.9 times minus 1.3. So you'll use this and this. These are the two values that I'm using here. And if you are actually solving the system of linear equations, you would have used v pi of something and v pi of something, but I am just putting these things together. Now, it turns out that you can actually simplify all of these numbers, right? pull them out and, and compute it and then you will end up with a value of minus 1.9. Right? So, I do not want to do the entire uh, arithmetic here, you can, you can work it out.